Good morning. Welcome to today's Indie Cards, the 20th of October. You'll have heard me mentioning recently the idea of carbon capture and storage by using redundant oil wells, which are depleted of oil and gas, uh, to pump carbon dioxide from our dirtiest industries uh, along the existing pipelines, which used to feed oil ashore back down into these depleted wells. Well, it's a great idea, and not only is it a great idea, but a project in uh, Aberdeen called the Acorn Project, which was to be the largest of its kind in the United Kingdom, the biggest carbon capture project um, ever attempted, has been refused funding by the British government today. Now, it's no accident that the British government has refused funding for this, because we can see now a pattern beginning to develop. Uh, in the British government, rather than allowing Scotland to do what it wants to do, which is to capture this carbon and to feed it into the North Sea oil fields, where it can be stored forever in the porous rocks out of harm's way instead of releasing it into the atmosphere, the British government doesn't want that to happen. It knows that climate uh, conference is coming up in uh, just a few weeks' time, in fact, and it wants to look like the United Kingdom is taking the lead. But in order for the United Kingdom to look like that, Scotland has to suffer. And this is a deliberate act of sabotage by the British government on the biggest carbon capture project in the UK. It's not the first time either that they've withdrawn funding for carbon capture. In fact, this is the second time they've done it. The British Energy Minister offered no explanation why this was being done, but it is known that certain carbon capture projects in the northeast of England are being funded by the UK government instead, and these are nowhere near as ready as the ACORN project was, nor do they equal the scope and the size of the project which was planned in Aberdeen. The Aberdeen project was planned to take all of the uh, the waste carbon dioxide from the uh, the, the big pardon me, the big fuel processing plant at Grangemouth, which is probably the dirtiest industry in Scotland, the one which pollutes the atmosphere the most with carbon dioxide. Now, you you know that I'm not a great fan of, uh, of, of uh, what is his name, Mr Ratcliffe, the, the owner of Ineos, but he did have the foresight to buy the oil uh, pipeline, which runs from the Forties field in the North Sea, to Grangemouth Refinery. Now, he obviously has done that with a view to using that to piping the carbon dioxide back to the wells in the, the old 40s field, which is now depleted and storing the carbon there. So he had the foresight, <coughs> it seems, to buy that pipeline with that in mind. Now, not only is this project, the Acorn project, intended to take all of the carbon dioxide from uh, the refinery in Grangemouth, it's also designed to take all of the carbon dioxide from a uh, power station in Peterhead. I'm not sure what that power station uses. I'm presuming it's probably a gas power station. But it was to take the, the waste exhaust gases from both of these sites and pump them back down into these depleted wells where they belong, back underground and not in the atmosphere. So I think we can see a pattern has developed now. The British government is sabotaging Scotland to make it look bad before COP26. That's basically what this is about. There is no practical, technical reason why this project should have had no funding from the UK government when it was due to deliver on Scotland's promises uh, in the next few weeks. It's annoying in the extreme. I mean, you can see how the British government is thinking. They want Scotland to look bad. They want Scotland to look too poor. They want it to look as if it's a big polluter. They want the SNP to look as if they're unable to deal with the pollution coming from the refineries and this uh, power station in Peterhead. And, of course, we don't have any control over that because the British government holds all the power when it comes to energy policy. The uh, British minister was waxing lyrical about the fact that they still remain committed to the goal of carbon capture, despite the fact that they're refusing to fund this massive Scottish project, which would have made a massive dent in carbon capture in the United Kingdom overnight. But instead of that, they've chosen to use it as a political weapon against Scotland. And that, I think, is probably the most... Uh, <sighs> probably the most damaging thing they could do to Scotland at the moment without actually deliberately uh, coming out and saying we're going to damage Scotland. But that's what they've done. Uh, they have effectively crippled our ability 
to get rid of this carbon dioxide and also, incidentally, have called into question the future of thousands of North Sea oil workers who have been working on this project for a long time to repurpose these wells and to reverse the process of extracting oil and gas from the wells so that they are putting the waste from that process back into, uh, into these uh, depleted oil fields. So instead of celebrating what should have been a huge success for Scotland, we are now tearing our hair out and wondering what we're going to do now because it does make Scotland look bad. But I think we have to point out to the global community at COP26 that this was not our doing. This was the British government refusing to fund a massive programme which would have reduced carbon emissions dramatically in Scotland. But for political reasons, so that the British government looked better than the Scottish government, they have decided to keep the funding to themselves and to give it to projects which aren't ready yet. The project uh, in Aberdeen was ready to go. It was shovel ready. It simply needed the funding to get it started. And that has been taken away by the British state. So if that doesn't make you angry enough to vote for independence, I don't know what will. There has been one little ray of sunshine today. The, um, the uh, marine engineering yard uh, on Lewis, which was recently bought out by Harland and Wolf, has won its first contract. And uh, this is to manufacture uh, some large components for a Black Sea uh, energy project. Now, this is good news, but it's, um, it, it, you know, it, it's a bitter pill to swallow when your entire carbon capture program for the whole of Scotland has basically been sabotaged by the British government. And all we're left with is a small contract to build some bits and pieces for somebody else's energy plant in the Black Sea. But this gives you an indication of the mindset of the Tory government, who are going hell for leather to cripple Scotland before it gets to COP26, to make us look bad, to make us look like we're not dealing with the pollution from the oil industry. It strikes me that it's possible, I'm not sure if the SNP has thought about this, but depending on how much funding was actually required to kickstart this programme, I would have challenged the SNP and the Green government to fund at least part of this programme to get it started, even in the face of this British tinkering and meddling in our affairs. Despite the fact the British government has control of our energy policy, when it comes to pollution, when it comes to environmental protection, there are laws in Scotland which have devolved. And I think we could use those devolved powers to create the funding to help kickstart that project, even if it meant that we had to spend a bit more than we needed to, even if it meant the Scottish government's uh, books not balancing for the next year, it would be worth it just to challenge the British government on this particular issue. It's so important to the future of the planet that we get these programmes funded and get them moving, that not to do so in the face of such a blatant uh, humiliation by the British state would be stupid. We need to stand up to Boris Johnson, we need to stand up to the British Energy Minister and say, no, we're not going to put up with this. We will fund this programme and we will get it started. And what are you going to do about it? Because it's not part of the control of the energy policy of the United Kingdom. This is to do with Scotland controlling air pollution. If we use our own laws, I am certain that we can short-circuit this British attempt at sabotage, because that's what this is. This is industrial sabotage on a national scale. It's one country deliberately trying to make another country look bad so that they look better. The British state, as I've said many times, has no idea how to manage its energy in the future. It's scrabbling around for all sorts of energy from outside of the UK instead of trying to develop the renewables capacity in Scotland and buy its energy from its supposed partner, its supposed equal partner in the union, this precious union that we're all supposed to be so grateful for being part of, is deliberately sabotaging the country. I can only say that this is probably the most disgraceful thing that the British government has ever done to Scotland, and I hope to heck that the Scottish government is going to come forward 
forward with a robust response to this and propose funding this project in a different way using Scottish environmental protection laws as the basis. We cannot leave this to go unchallenged today. This is the ultimate kick in the face from Boris Johnson just before the climate crisis. It is three days until the whole of the West End is locked down for the beginning of the, uh, the COP26 preparations. It's time that Scotland got off its knees and stopped going, it's not fair, you keep doing bad things to us and it's not fair. We need to stand up and do something about this now. If we lose this battle and we let the British government stomp all over us again, then we're basically admitting that we have no power over our own uh, controls over pollution. And that's not the case. We have very strong controls on environmental protection. And I think since this entire programme is based on Scottish soil and it involves getting rid of pollution, it's not part of the energy powers of the United Kingdom at all. This is to do simply with removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And I think that even if you went to the people of Scotland at the moment and said, well, you'd give a fiver to get this project started, you would probably have a queue around the block of people wanting to make sure this happens, to invest in the future of our carbon reduction and our greener uh, reindustrialization. So I'm angry today and I think we should all be angry and it's time to be angry and to contact our own politicians and say what the hell are you going to do about this? Ian Blackford said last week that there would be a major announcement at some point this week about independence and all I've seen in the paper this morning is Ian Blackford saying that they will be sharpening their focus on independence. Now what the hell is that supposed to mean? That is not a major policy announcement. That is nothing. That is just a bunch of rhetoric. Let's hear something concrete. What's the Scottish Government going to do about this provocation? Because that's what this is. It's a provocation. It's a deliberate act of industrial sabotage on our attempts to reduce our own carbon emissions. And I think it's time that we fought back. Let me know in the comments after the programme what you think. But to me, this is a step too far. This is something that cannot go unanswered. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.